Welcome to the Star of Grind. Tell us a little bit about where you grew up and your family and um, you know some of the, some of those things that some of us probably don't know about you. Yeah, um, well, well, I thought I've been in the witness protection program for a while, so I guess I'm going to have to uh, uh, talk about my background. Um, a very uh, non-traditional uh, Silicon Valley, uh, both background and uh, history in the valley. Uh, and maybe not for some of you, but uh, uh, my parents were immigrants to the United States, uh, you know, came over in steerage and, and people came over in ships, went through Ellis Island uh, in, in New York, and then in the early part of the 20th century worked in sweatshops in New York City as uh, teenagers, and then my parents met their dream was to open up a grocery store on the Lower East Side of New York, and uh, not quite ever understanding this to maybe 50 years later, I realized my parents were entrepreneurs, and they did do a startup, and the startup is being defined as not working for anybody else other than yourself and being responsible for your own uh, career, and, uh, uh, you know, they struggled as you know, first-generation Americans did, and, uh, um, you know, they had this dream for what their kid would do, and um, I did exactly the opposite. <laughs> um, and what, uh, did you work in the store? Did you, what, yeah, what was you know, your role? Yeah, I was a little kid, uh, you know, me and my sister, uh, and a sister is about 12 years old, uh, older. Um, you know, your role is when you were tall enough not to fall into the pickle barrel. Sure. You, uh, you shelf stuff and you helped around and you tried not to eat all the candy. <laughs> and I, as you can tell, I failed. Uh, <laughs> do you feel like, uh, in terms of your work ethic, I mean, I was looking at your, you know, some of your background and the things you've done, and it, it was like, Page after page after page. I mean, you, you seem to have a work ethic that is that is uh, is quite unique. Do you feel like that came from watching your parents kind of struggle through this experience in the store? Do you feel like it was innate in you? What what where did that come no, from? No, I, I I at least wouldn't say consciously, maybe unconsciously, but I was a real screw up in school. Um, you know, by the time I was uh, six, my father had left home, and my mother raised me as a you know single, semi-divorced uh, parents in the 1960s. Um, you know, I don't think I did a day of homework because my mother was, uh, um, let's just say, I, I lived in an outpatient clinic, um, and, and that was my apartment. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so day to day, I never quite knew what was going on. So uh, uh, leaving home was probably the, the sanest thing that happened to me for the first 17 years of my life. And talk about what, uh, as you went to school, where did you go to school? What what uh, what did you plan to study? Uh, I went to school in uh, New York City, in uh, standard New York City public uh, uh, junior high and high school education. Um, and uh, like all of kids of my generation, first generation of uh, American uh, Jewish immigrants, your son is going to be a accountant, a doctor, or a lawyer, depending on their, you know, the tests. And, and of course, that was, you know, what they packed me off and sent me to college to go do. Um, of course, that wasn't my plan. How'd that but, work out? Uh, uh, I dropped out after my first semester. Um, but I managed to try every possible uh, interesting substance in school in the 70s and, uh, um, and uh, uh, packed in a lot of uh, activities. And um, uh, uh, another long story, but it was the middle of the Vietnam War. And uh, through a couple of uh, interesting trips, the uh, first thing was I decided um, I hated college. and. Uh, I couldn't focus on anything and uh, had no idea why I was there. And I had a girlfriend uh, at the time who was actually working really hard to stay in school. And she said, and I happened to get a scholarship by accident. Um, though after a while I realized not all of these are accidents. Um, we said, why are you here? Some of us actually care to be in school. Why don't you leave and go figure out, you know, when you want to go do it? And um, I guess she didn't think I'd uh, take her up on it. And I stuck out my thumb and I hitchhiked from Michigan. I went to school to Florida, and I ended up accidentally working at the Miami International Airport, um, loading racehorses onto cargo planes. And by Specialized? You were in yeah, that vertical? Yeah, that was a, yeah. Try to find that ad in a newspaper. <laughs> uh, and, and knew nothing about airplanes, but became fascinated with, here I am in an airport. And I wasn't with the pilots. I didn't want to fly, but it was with the, all the electronics in the plane. I started taking home all the manuals and said, boy, I'd like to learn how to do this stuff. But... I said, gee, without any training, there's no way you're going to go ever do this. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, the government had a war going on and was looking for young and uh, kind of semi-stupid teenagers, and I volunteered for the Air Force. Um, and then ended up, ended up uh, volunteering to go to Southeast Asia. I spent two years uh, during the Vietnam War learning how to repair electronics uh, um, and got into a field called electronic warfare, which also happened to be a 
interesting accident as well. And you were in Vietnam or where were you stationed? I was in Thailand for two years, three year basis, which Thailand had some fringe benefits at the time as well for uh, teenagers. Um, <laughs> when I know I'm going to, I still tell my children I was just there. It's a sushi. It's it's just sushi, amazing. and I was just reading a lot. <laughs> Trust me, I you know visited all the corners of the country. Um, and, and, um, um, but um, I, I learned a skill uh, in the military, which was uh, actually quite useful in Silicon Valley. You and I were chatting about this a, a, a bit. One is I realized uh, I operated uh, extremely well under chaos. Uh, and if you want chaos, you know, first of all, you want the world's largest bureaucracy to deal with the military. And then in chaotic situations in wartime with you know, hundreds of fighter planes on a base and blah, 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 and stuff needed to be fixed, I was actually pretty calm, cool, and collected when stuff was breaking around me. Um, and you know, there were planes not coming back someday. And uh, I remember coming to the valley a couple years later, somebody complaining, oh, this is so hard, <laughs> so hard. Well, what, well, you could get fired here. I went, well, I was in a place where it was so hard, you could get killed. So it was all kind of relative about what, what hard actually was.